Number 13. RGB color television and computer displays use cathode ray tubes that produce colors by mixing red, green, and blue light. If we look at the screen with a magnifying glass, we can see individual dots turn on and off as the colors change. Use a spectrum of visible light, determine the approximate wavelengths of each of these colors, what is the frequency and energy of a photon of each of these colors. And the colors that we want to know is the red, green, and blue. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say red over here, and then we'll do green over here, and then blue over here. Okay, so I just took a snippet of the visible light spectrum from your textbook, which is this diagram below right here. This is the only visible light spectrum that is given in your textbook, so I guess we got to work with that, right guys? The, the only problem here is that they use lengths as angstroms. You see how they have a, they have a A with like a little halo at the top? That's angstrom. Normally, wavelengths are usually in nanometers or meters. So first, let's just get the numbers, red, green, and blue, and angstrom, and then we can convert to their appropriate nanometers or meters. All right. So let's look at red. Now, the, the good thing about this is they say approximate. So we don't have to be spot on. We just have to be somewhere in the ballpark. So red, it seems, would mm, let's make it easy on ourselves, right? We could definitely say that 7,000 is a wavelength for red, right? You could also say that 680 is a wavelength for red. Anything that's basically in this spectrum is a wavelength for red. So um, it doesn't really matter. Let's use 680 or 6,800 angstroms for red. So we got red as 6,800 angstroms. Now, we should know. And guys, remember this if your teacher or professor doesn't give it to you. You guys should know how to convert from angstroms to meters, right? And then from there, you guys should be able to go from meters to nanometers. I'll tell you the quick hand version because we're not in the converting units anymore. So if you guys want to go from angstroms to meters, all you got to do is just divide by 10 to the 10th. And then vice versa, if you ever need to go back, you just multiply by 10 to the 10th. Meters to nanometers, you'll times by 10 to the ninth. And if you need to go back to meters, you would divide by 10 to the ninth. All right? So know this progression. So 6,800 angstroms, if I converted it into meters, I just divide by 10 to the 10th. So 6,800 divide by 10 to the 10th. Error. There is no error in the calculator. <laughs> Divided by 10 to the 10th. Okay, so we get 6.8 times 10 to the negative 7th. That's in meters. And now let's just go to nanometers. Nanometers are just times by 10 to the 9th. So 680. So these would be your two wavelengths if they wanted it in meters and if they wanted it in nanometers. So they don't say specifically, so I'm just going to get both of them, all right? Oop. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's do the same thing for green and blue. So green looks like it would be basically here, right? This is a nice green. And what is that? Well, this is going up by by 200s, right? So this would be 5,200, 5,400, 600, 800, and then back to 6,000. So we're saying that green would be 5,200 anstroms. And if we do the same progression, you'll find out that this is 5.2 times 10 to the negative seventh meters, and then it would be 520 nanometers. Let's do the same thing for blue now. Blue this looks like a good blue right here. They go up by 200s, so I want to search for this one. So 4,000 angstroms, 4,200 angstroms, 4,400 angstroms. So 4,400 angstroms. If we did the same calculations, we would find that this would be 4.4 times 10 to the negative seventh meters, 
which is the same thing as 440 nanometers. Okay, so that's all the approximate wavelengths. Now we just got to get the frequency and the energies for each one of these. So let's get to it. So for the red one, if we want to find out frequency, we know that formula, right? How do we go from a wavelength to a frequency? C equals lambda frequent, uh, wavelength times V, which is frequency. So C equals wavelength times frequency. C is always that constant number, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So 2.998 times 10 to the eighth equals the wavelength. Now remember in this one, we only can use meters. So we got to choose the meter answer for each one of them. You have to choose the meter one. Okay. So this would equal 6 point, 6.8 times 10 to the negative seventh times V and then just divide 6.8 times 10 to the negative seventh 6.8 times 10 to the negative seventh so v equals frequency equals 2.998 times 10 to the eighth divided by 6.8 times 10 to the negative seventh so we get a frequency of basically 4.4 times 10 to the 14th cycles per second. So S to the negative one, or you can say Hertz, whichever one. So that's the frequency for this one. Let's keep going. For green, it's gonna be the same thing. C equals lambda times frequency, wavelength times frequency. So 2.998 times 10 to the eighth equals, now we're using this number. 5.2 times 10 to the negative seventh times frequency. Divide by frequency, 5.2 times 10 to the negative seventh. 5.2 times 10 to the negative seventh. Frequency equals 2.998 to the eighth divided by 5.2 to the negative seventh. We get 5.8 times 10 to the 14 cycles per second. So seconds to the minus one, or if you want to say hertz, that's fine as well. And then the last one for frequency, for blue, C equals wavelength times frequency. We have to use the meter number. So 2.998 times 10 to the eighth equals 4.4 times 10 to the negative seventh times frequency divide by 4.4 times 10 to the negative seventh on both sides. Cancels that out. V equals, frequency equals, 2.998 to the 8 divided by 4.4 to the negative 7th. We get 6.8 times 10 to the 14th cycles per second, S to the minus 1, or you can say hertz. All right, so those are your three frequencies. Now we have to find the energy, right? So we found this out. Now let's just find out the energies. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase this work um, so that we could do the energies. We could do the energies from the wavelengths. So I'm just going to erase all this. So if you guys need to get the answers, just hit that pause button, write it down. And then when you're ready, we can start. So I need this. Oh gosh, I got rid of the green. It's back. <laughs> so we need to get rid of this. We need to get rid of, actually, this would probably be faster if I just got rid of all this. Let's see, awesome. And then this, okay, cool. Now, how do we go from a wavelength to an energy? We know this formula, right? It's E equals HC over wavelength. We know what C is already. Now we just need to know what H is. H is Planck's constant, right? That's 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules per second. So we're just going to use H and C with our wavelengths to solve. Let's get to it. E equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th, 2.998 times 10 to the 8th all over... 
Now with this one, we still have to use meters. So it still would, it still would be the ones that are highlighted. 6.8 times 10 to the negative 17th. Energy equals. Calculate time, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times 2.998 times 10 to the 8th divided by 6.8 times 10 to the negative 7th. And I get 2.9. 2.9 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. That's the first answer. Box that answer off. Next one. E for green. E equals HC over wavelength. So E equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times 2.998 times 10 to the 8th all over now the wavelength, which is 5.2 times 10 to the negative 7th. Energy equals, I'll put it down here, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times 2.998 times 10 to the 8th, all divided by 5.2 times 10 to the negative 7th. I get 3.8. 3.8 times 10 to the negative 19th joules per one photon. So there's that one. Last but not least for blue, E equals HC over wavelength. Energy equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times 2.998 times 10 to the 8th, all over the new blue wavelength, which is 4.4 .4, times 10 to the negative 7th. Put that into the calculator. 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times 2.998 to the 8th divided by 4.4 .4, times 10 to the negative 7th. And your energy is 4.5 times 10 to the negative 19th joules per one photon Box that answer off. That's the answer to this question. So yeah, so basically we just had to do the same thing three times. But this one was great practice so that you guys can get it perfect or very, very close to perfect to, well, on your tests or quizzes or homeworks or whatever. But I'm happy to be along with you on your journey. Thank you so much for coming here to get help for your OpenStax books, Adam's first chemistry textbook, right? Thank you so much. I hope I'm helping you. What do you guys think, though? Let me know in the comments. Love to hear from you guys. If you want, you can hit the subscribe button. Not only will you get tons of questions on your feed when I post next, but you'll be also helping people from all over the world get access to this help service, and that would be really cool. Thank you so much. And also, we like to see the subscribe numbers go up, right? I think right now we're at 66 so we'll see where we're at in a month from now or two. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next question. Bye-bye.